right. If we're all live here. And in most of the world, happy Monday. I call it Stormy Monday. Tuesday is just as bad. But it's not about bad news. I'm Richard Moore and I want to talk about some people getting fat. And it's not just Mama Cass. And we'll talk about the Brady List and how some of, uh, uh, not some, but many people are help perpetuate civil injustice and to prevent equal protect protection and of course deny that inalienable right you know the that inalienable right means that it's not something that can be bartered or given away or taken away this is this is the most important and number one on the list as an American citizen, and that is the inalienable right of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And so when that is abjectly denied, now some will, will say, well, what, what if a person is a serial killer and that is their pursuit of happiness? Well, then... Of course, I'm not uh, speaking with these uh, or two these morons that would like to throw in some type of uh, uh, issue that is uh, completely absurd. But operating within the boundaries of the law and the rule of law, and that is the master law is, of course, the Constitution of the United States of America, which by and for the establishment hates that document. And they're not going to tell you that, but we, we know that actions speak louder than words. When we have a mass shooting, then what, what do we hear next? Gun control. They want to infringe on our Second Amendment rights. And ladies and gentlemen, we know that guns do not kill people. Planned Parenthood, however, you may want to speak with them and, 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 and get their numbers of how many millions they've killed. People kill people. People with guns kill people. But just because we have people that use guns in the wrong way, and I'm not talking about pistol whipping, but, but to go on a killing spree, that we need to address those problems. Now, does this mean we need to throw a whole bunch, maybe a few more billion dollars into community-oriented policing? We can have this holistic approach to policing where everybody does their job, does their part, including mental health. And sure, we would rather see our mentally handicapped or mentally ill people in, in uh, some type of treatment facility or a program or whatever, as opposed to be thrown in a penitentiary as some type of uh, treatment. So we can all agree with that. But there, so we do have a, a, a small segment of people that are criminally insane. Other than the ones in Washington that are in prisons. So, you know, and I'm not splitting hairs here, folks. It's not in the eye of the beholder. It, it is, this is a, a major problem. Well, so if the Second Amendment is being attacked relentlessly and they're using these mass shootings, for instance, as a reason, it always is a mass shooting, you get ah, gun control. 
you got to have a combination lock on your uh, trigger. So if you get a home invasion, you better be sharp, but dial that thing and, and, and so forth. Uh, make sure the, the, the fingerprint or whatever you've got on there to biometric lock on it. Uh, meanwhile, you may be dead. It's, it's, it's beyond ridiculous, folks. The Uvalde shooting, Sandy Hook, Columbine, need I continue? These people, individuals, where, here's the smoking gun, community oriented policing, Pasco County, Florida, is your textbook example. Chris Nako, he's not backing down from targeting children starting in the second grade. Poor grades, socioeconomic background, broken family, what have you. And so they're, they're not only the child, but the whole family are punished for crimes they have yet to commit or may never commit. And yes, there was a movie called The Minority Report. Folks, when you see these movies, you think, man, that's just... Well, that's a real good fantasy science fiction. No, that's reality. George Orwell wrote a book in, 19, uh, in the 50s titled 1984. His name wasn't George Orwell. And that book, as we now know, was not prophecy, nor was it fantasy, nor was it fiction. It's the absolute blueprint in which we live today. He just happened to be an insider that gave us a peek at what was really going on. Mississippi The Mississippi Center for Public Policy released the Fat Cat Report the 2022 Fat Cat Report and I'll give you two examples. The school superintendent of Tupelo, Mississippi, at 7,005 students, is paid more than the governor of Texas, population 28 million. That's, uh, and then I think we've got another one that the superintendent of the Macomb, Mississippi school board is paid more than the governor of Florida. Now, we know that <laughs> Mississippi has a billion dollar surplus. It's probably more than that. It was Mike Moore, the Attorney General, spearheaded that finally took down Big Tobacco. And uh, because they were lying to us, had us hooked on uh, these uh, cancer-causing uh, deals. And, and so the state of Mississippi got billions in that settlement, by the way. The, the governor, even in the flows, the deep flows of this COVID deal, could not access this money. Nor can the citizens of Mississippi access this money. The legislator has got that tucked away and you will never get the straight of it. Not one penny has been spent on any citizens that we're aware of or any project, road, hospital, school, homeless shelter, taking care of all, none of that. That's the elephant in the room. Well, those two superintendents that I just mentioned, Mississippi, well, what they're paying, those two superintendents could pay for an additional 194 nurses or 232 state troopers or 228 teachers. And I'm quite sure that it's a hard pill to swallow for these teachers. And of course they know. 
that they're overpaid under over underpaid and overworked. And in most cases, having to spend money out of their own paycheck to buy supplies and so forth to conduct class with your children or your grandchildren. And, and, well, I, I thought I paid taxes and all that public school. They should be all, well, you can say that until the cows come home. We got the fat cats that are making it. I don't know how they rationalize that. So you went, you got a degree and all that, but, but when we had this great golf fix between the haves and the have-nots, understand that everything, we see these new policies, we, we see these people making it and flourishing, and we're constantly, the gas prices going up, groceries, all these things, cost of living, of course, Minimum wage is going up, but I mean, what the hell does that matter if everything else is going up? It, it, it's, it's, it makes no difference. If a minimum wage is $20 an hour and a loaf of bread is $10, then you hadn't gained. I mean, it's, it's not rocket science, folks. It's the complacency that many have fallen into and accepted. Unless that change is here, we'll never see change in our country, in this nation. We the people won't change. We the people are tired of the hoodwinks, the lies, the backroom deals. We're tired of bills being pushed through and a thousand other pet projects behind them that nobody knows anything about. Senator Cindy Hyde-Smith, a junior senator from Mississippi, boasts about the millions of dollars that, in community-oriented policing funds that were uh, granted to, I think, somewhere in central Mississippi, school district. I'm just confused at, at uh, the, the fact, two things. One, that, that the, the general population has no idea. When I talk about these school shootings, they said, well, community and policing, federal grants for the schools, so what? What, does that mean they're going to have soldiers with AK-47 standing in the hallways and, and every teacher's arm? Some schools are doing that now. I'm all for that. I'm all, I've am all. i been saying it. I, I said that, that if we'd been doing that on our, uh, on our flights, we, we've never had a hijacking. I mean, everybody that comes on the plane, you give them a revolver loaded or an automatic and then take them up when they get off the plane. I don't think we'll have that will solve the hijacking problem. I'm just saying, folks, it's a little different ball game when that happens, but they want to take that, that leverage away. And, and so we're all about exposing and talking about the things that people just don't want to talk about. When I do stories about these Young people and seniors dying and being be murdered, raped. So, 77-year-old Judy Baxter in Amory, Mississippi, last year, home in, broke in her home, brutally raped and murdered her while her Alzheimer's or dementia-stricken husband was there and could do nothing. I've offered some uh, things into that equation. Of course, I haven't heard anything. I really don't expect to because once they've dug in with a lie, if you'll just let history show, 
Uh, ten years from now, it'll still be, well, that was just, we never did know what happened. Or they did make an arrest on something unrelated and some blah, 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 blah. Uh, that is, their strong suit is sticking to the lie. Too, too many people are, are showing too much exposure. Pillars of the community. Pillars of the community. The fat cats. The fat cats. Now, how do we keep the fat cats in? Well, this is the complacency that we get. So when I talk about these deaths, whether it be Judy Baxter, Ryan Taylor, in, in Louds County, Mississippi, Austin Hines, Zachary Massey, Smithville, Folks, I've done a lot. I haven't forgotten any of them's names. And and it emotionally and psychologically it will it, it, it is a heavy load. And I as in most cases I don't know these individuals. In some cases I do. It's not easy. And I, I will tell you that it has destroyed families. And many of them across this nation. When everybody else is implying that they should just move on, they just don't understand. Well, who are the complacent, perping by proxy culprits in this? Inevitably, when I do one of these stories, you're going to have these perping by proxy morons surface. They'll contact maybe the victim's family. And, and and say things like, just let things die down. Just let them do what they're supposed to do. That's the problem. We're talking about them. Let them do what they're supposed to do. If they were doing what they took an oath to do and what we're paying them to do, we wouldn't be having this conversation not near as often. And I apologize if I'm talking too loud. That's for those that... Uh, that might be outside eavesdropping. I don't want them to miss anything. Or they will attack the messenger. They want to talk about me. Or they want to throw their two cents worth in. They, in other words, they're not related. It's not their son or daughter. They weren't they were there at the crime scene. They just went off something that, that uh, the Columbus Dispatch or the Daily Journal. And if that's, folks, that really... I mean, someone should contact uh, PETA and, and about uh, the unethical treatment of animals by even putting that stuff as a liner in a bird cage. I don't know if the birds can read or not, but we don't want to take that chance. It's commercial garbage. Now, if you want it in full color... Then you look no further than WCBI and WTVA or any of your local network news readers. They are not going to talk. They, when, when something happens, they get the statement, the spokesperson from that department, and very seldom are they going to go off of anything past what they tell them. Unless the sheriff is one that told us about this murder and how it happened, says something different, we're going to stick with that. There will never be two sides to that coin. However, I offer that here for those that feel like I said, well, you got my name wrong, you got the story wrong, you got it what, and I'm in it, and uh, blah, 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 blah. Well, then uh, if you're real and you're serious, I'm open. I'm open to that. I'll absolutely put you in front of the camera and let you tell it, and we'll we will all stand corrected. You can give your version of it. Now, folks, knowing that I offer this, then they'll come up with another excuse why they won't do that. Okay. Well, then you know my best advice is how about putting a sock in your pie hole and let the grown folks do what the grown folks are doing. And so that's exactly what the deal is, what the deal's got to be.
let the grown folks do what the grown folks are doing. And folks, let me tell you, let me get, I've got uh, Skype jumping up here. I'm going to tell you folks, it's worse than any kind of virus you can imagine. They get um, people, trolls popping up wanting to talk. Hi. And um, I just can't imagine. I just can't imagine. I'm, um, I don't hate anybody. I, I, I'm just not a social butterfly. And, um, you know, I, I'm just, um, I'm an American citizen that wants to be left the hell alone. And not have someone or people up in my business worried about me and the bigger question should be they is they need to be worried about why they're worried about somebody else because while you're busy getting that uh, splinter out of your neighbor's eye there's a beam in yours now, if you don't like that statement, or you say, well, that's not true, well, you take that up with Jesus, because that's what he said, and I'm going to go with that. And that settles that, okay? It's that simple. So they will perk by proxy and tell you, just let it go. I've even had victims' families tell me that they were contacted by law enforcement, wanting to know if they'd been talking to me. Look, we got this, and that, that, and try to put ice water on it. When you go for that, when you go for that nudge, then, then you are seeing. Recognize this. The scales should drop off your eyes now. Those that are responsible are those that are fueling those that are responsible. They're perping by proxy. That's where the fake, phony, and the misguided criminal is fed. By those that are mindless, wandering aimlessly, and whatever they say is the way it is. And the next thing you know it, folks, we may have to learn Chinese to speak to our government officials. We don't know. I hadn't got a clue. I wish I could tell you in all certainty who was running this country. <laughs> and uh, I mean, I could tell you what the, what what uh, conventional wisdom says and, and, and what, what the federal websites tell us. And so, so goes the rest of the deal. So they have circumvented the Constitution, of course, it, on every aspect imaginable, folks. When we got that Patriot Act, that was just a temporary measure. Got to do this, just temporary. Well, we're well over 10,000 days, I believe, in this temporary measure. Folks, ain't nothing about 10,000 days temporary. You know, it's like, I'm going to fast temporarily. I mean, you fast for 10,000 days, you're dead. Hold your breath that long, you're dead. And a whole bunch of other things, you're dead. So, like the Constitution. So get these Department of Homeland Security fusion centers. They're not any part of the government. Nope. They're owned by state employees and private entities. Now, so there's no congressman or senator or anybody that can block funding and control and make it, bring them up here so you're going to answer these questions. No, it's a, it ain't got nothing to do with that. Mm -mm. But they're allowed to operate. And they only communicate with law enforcement. And they fuse all your data from your your phonological data, your medical data, your credit, your track, everything you in your movement, everything you do on your smartphone, your text message, email, all that. Fuse it together. It's fusion center, and it, one nice little deal for law enforcement. All they got to do is hit the button, and they get it in real time. Hit it again in an hour. And that's, it's it, uh, it's in real time update. Just go to the Department of Homeland Security Fusion Center of your state and look and reach. Go be on the front page. Who's running that deal? 
Now, that's reason not a government. So we, we can't get the inside on what's really going on there. Because it's owned by people, American citizens, we assume. Some of them are. But we don't know. It means they're not a public or a publicly traded company or a federal agency or state agency. We can't question it. Now, the governor is the um, ceremonial head of this deal. I'll guarantee you, uh, Tate Reeves hasn't got a key to the door and, and hasn't got any dogs in any hunt on anything they do. In other words, do you want red or purple punch at the Christmas party? They might give him some input there. Other than that, there won't be anything else. In the details, folks, I'm going to have our link to the Brady List. We are citizens reporters for the National Brady List. We hold public officials accountable. This is part of their record, and it will go through the process, whether it be the Bar Association, public integrity, what have you. This is for law enforcement, attorneys, prosecutors, judges, city, state, and federal. And so, you can just follow our link, and you can anonymously report misconduct or what have you, or you can put your name on it, like I do. Either way, that's part of the permanent record. And we're not doing that, folks. Not doing that. We're, we're not talking about it enough. If we, we, we do a little less bitching and a little more working, folks, we can we will make change. This is not a pie in the sky deal. This is the real thing. It, there's a reason they want to shut me up. I'm talking about the things they don't want me talking about. They would rather be be talking about. Ice water challenges, dumping ice water on somebody's head. Or who can blow up a balloon the quickest. Or Easter egg hunt, or something like that. Meanwhile, back in the real world, we've got a little bigger fish to fry than this BS. So it's not about getting how many likes I get on Facebook or not. My platform is not Facebook. I think the platform that we should be more interested in, as I have always been, and that is in federal court and in our federal judicial system. That's the platform. That's the platform. So this week, this week, I'm asking those, my viewers, and I've said this before, I'm totally supported by those that support the viewers and our listeners. And without that, I'm not here. I'm not out doing it, doing what I do. And when you don't see me on here, I don't just assume I'm out fishing or something like that. You can believe me, it's anything but that. People have asked, we have a GoFundMe. What are you going to do with the money? It's self explanatory, okay? What, what do you do with your money? Well, you get paid, okay? Um, they ask questions as if I'm uh, being endowed with several million dollars a month and, and people just kind of, uh, you know, just want to be nosy or I'd like to know what you're doing with money. Well, I, look, ask Joel Osteen what he's doing with his money. If you can catch him in that Ferrari. And he, he, he has motivational speeches in a place they call a church down in Houston, Texas. Now, he's not John Osteen. That was his dad. Two different people. Joel Osteen will never mention hellfire, damnation, and brimstone, weeping and wailing, and, 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 and gnashing of teeth. That makes people uncomfortable. And so he, he, he and his came with his own mouth, chose to he only talk about the things that people are comfortable with. <laughs> well, folks, you can't talk about heaven without talking about hell. Because when you don't talk about hell... And, 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 the, and, the, and what hell has to offer then you have completely dismissed what Jesus Christ did on Calvary's cross now many of you have quit you've quit 
So, I, you know, I, I hope for this and this, and I, I just quit. You gave up. You surrendered. And I'm going to tell you, God cannot help a quitter. Let me say it again. God cannot help a quitter. But he will help a failure. God cannot help a quitter. Because you see, he has nothing to work with. But he will help a failure. The devil lied to you and says you've done you've gone too far, done too much, you're in too deep. That's a lie. If you fail tomorrow, go to God. He's right there. The next day, he's right there. He's not gonna leave. When he says he'll never leave, he won't. I'm telling you today. Got a better way for our Monday is for those that were, were just giving up and quit. Quit believing. Quit praying for that prodigal, for that marriage, for that job, for that breakthrough. Repent of that. And God will help you. He'll help you. Folks, I need your support. All the links also have our petition, the Targeted Individual Protection Act, and justice for Austin Hines, and all that in my contact information. Please share and subscribe. And encourage your friends to share and subscribe. Let me hear from you today. Until next time, God bless you.